Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for losing my cool with my husband on his family reunion day. I'm a 35 year old woman married to a 38 year old man. We've been together for 10 years and have two kids, ages 9 and 5. My husband works incredibly hard, juggling multiple jobs throughout the week. He's buried in debt from his past, which is why he works so much. I also work over 60 hours a week. I handle the household and childcare while most of his income goes toward his debts. I manage everything at home, cleaning, lawn care, repairs, you name it. He helps where he can, but this year, he's taken time off for family and co-worker events and gone on trips with friends. Each time I'm left as the designated babysitter. His parents live nearby, and he spends a lot of time helping them, grocery shopping, fixing things around their house and doing their housework. They do help with his siblings' kids but never ours. His four siblings live close by, but they don't pitch in. I've told him how frustrated I am about being constantly overlooked. Recently, I completely lost it. I found out he'd invited his family over for a reunion last week. I thought he'd taken time off work for it, but he hadn't. The house was a mess, most of it his doing. I had to clean the house, get groceries, run the kids to their weekend events, and start cooking, all while he was still at work. The reunion was set for 4 p.m., right when he gets off. By the time his family started arriving, I was seething. He called asking why there weren't any clean towels for him to use before his shower. That's when I completely lost it in front of his entire family. I ranted about how I'm always put last, how I'm handling everything at home while he works just to pay off his debts, and how I feel like I'm nothing more than an occasional partner when he's in the mood. I told him I was done, packed a bag and drove off. I ended up in a parking lot, hysterical. The kids weren't with me, they were outside playing. He's a good father, but as a husband, I felt like I'd be better off alone. I'm filled with resentment, and his loud and clear text response only added to my anger. It's typical of how he deals with things, avoiding real conversations and emotions. After the text, his family bombarded me with calls and messages. I told my husband I needed space and asked him to stop his family from contacting me. I put my phone on do not disturb except for the kids I pad. I called my mother, sent her some money, and she took the kids for a special overnight at her place. With the kids safe, I FaceTimed them, telling them I was working, even though I wasn't. I used my secret rainy day, fun to book a nice hotel and spa day for myself. I spent the day pampering myself, crying, and journaling my feelings. It was something I hadn't had time for in a long while. When I finally checked Reddit, I braced myself for a ton of, you are the asshole comments, but the responses were surprisingly supportive. To clarify a few things, I don't know the full extent of his debts. A lot of it came from his parents putting bills in his name, and some from mismanagement of money and credit cards. After finding a letter saying we were about to lose our house, I took over the finances about three years ago. I supported him through debt repayment, but with inflation and rising costs, it's been overwhelming. I was supposed to go back to school, but had to postpone that to catch up on our finances, hence the 60-plus hour work weeks. I'm a nurse working 12-hour shifts and overtime. I'm exhausted and burnt out, and realizing this now made me see how deeply I've been struggling. His family doesn't babysit our kids because they once did and threw it in our faces. My husband insists he needs to do more for his parents because they won't be around forever, but I think his siblings should share the responsibility too. I've told him that multiple times. When he takes trips, I'm left feeling neglected and angry because I have to beg for time together, and when we do get it, we end up fighting. I'm so full of resentment that it feels almost too late for anything to change. So, I stop, accepted my reality, and had my outburst. I haven't talked to him since besides telling him to call off his family. I'm enjoying the peace and time alone, focusing on myself and my mental health. I need to clear my head before dealing with reality again. Update I'm still upset and disappointed. I have a ton of voicemails from his family but I can't muster the energy to listen to them all. I called my husband this morning, and he sounded like he hadn't slept. He told me he asked everyone to leave after I left. He was surprised to see my mom picking up the kids. That's when it hit him how serious things were. We had a long talk. I apologized for my outburst and for not communicating better. He admitted that he's glad it happened because his family finally saw how much they've impacted our home life. After I left, he told his siblings they needed to step up and help with their parents. His parents were upset, which I didn't care about. They couldn't believe they were seen as a burden just for asking for a little help. I just rolled my eyes. 
This time of heart allowed me to express all my feelings, and he admitted he felt like a failure and was ashamed of the debt and the way things have turned out. He said he's been feeling depressed and exhausted because he couldn't see a way out. He'd been going out with friends to escape the stress, which he now realizes wasn't fair to me or the kids. I told him I was sick of his self-pity. I'm depressed too, working myself to the bone, and I'm angry that his income has gone solely to debt with no end in sight. I've been carrying the weight of this marriage and our family, and I feel he's only to blame for that. He said he'd show me everything about his debts and finances and promised he's almost debt-free. He revealed his parents had opened credit cards and bills in his name, racking up nearly $100 in K in debt, ruining his credit. He's been fighting with collection agencies, trying to settle and consolidate debts. He was in tears, saying he didn't know how to tell me the extent of the damage. I was furious. I felt like his mess had ruined my life and our kids' lives. I told him he should have taken action against his parents. He said he didn't call me because he was scared he'd say the wrong thing. I thanked him for his honesty and told him I'm too broken and angry to deal with his issues right now. I need time to clear my head. He suggested marriage counseling and said he'd taken the rest of the week off to work on things. I sobbed uncontrollably, asking why he could take time off now but not before. Why didn't I matter before? I told him he needs that time to find counseling and legal advice. I'm not coming home. He begged me to reconsider, worried about the kids and our home. I said I know, this is what needs to be done and had already set things in motion. He hung up on me. I picked up the kids and were having a fun week at a fancy hotel, swimming room service making memories. I used some of my rainy day fun to extend the stay. Seeing their faces light up when I told them I didn't have to work tonight was priceless. I have a legal consultation tomorrow and plan to sort things out. Story 2. A.I.T.A. for saying no to my neighbor? The house across from me recently sold. The previous owners, who built the house and lived there for nearly 50 years, were the sweetest people you could imagine. They're truly missed. I didn't get a chance to meet the new neighbors until recently. They're only living there intermittently while doing renovations, so I haven't had much interaction with them. Our street is quite busy, with a double yellow line down the middle. While street parking isn't illegal, it's definitely dangerous due to the high traffic and narrow road. The new neighbors have a small driveway that can fit maybe six cars, but with their yard set up, there's no room for parking on the lawn. I, on the other hand, have a large circular driveway that could probably accommodate 15 to 20 cars if needed. However, there's only one entrance and exit point to the street, which makes things tricky. The other day, while I was out getting the mail, the new neighbor was outside. She came over and introduced herself, and we had a brief chat. Then she asked, may I ask a favor of you? I laughed and said, well, you can ask. She explained that they were planning a big house party the weekend after the 4th of July, and were expecting a large number of guests. She hoped they could use my driveway for parking since street parking was difficult. I told her sorry no, it would block me in, I'm fine with your guests parking on the grass in front of my fence, there's a small grass strip between my fence and the street, the Smiths, the previous owners, used to do that for large gatherings. She responded, I appreciate that but it'll only fit about 6 cars, we need space for another 10-12 to 12 cars beyond what we can fit in our driveway. I reiterated, sorry I really can't offer you use of my driveway, without it being a huge inconvenience for us, I have to say no. She then said, well, my guests could park along the side and back of your driveway, so you can still get in and out. I replied, I'm still gonna have to say no, I'm uncomfortable with your guests on my property, and my only outdoor light is a post light, it gets very dark, and I wouldn't want anyone tripping or getting hurt. She looked frustrated and said, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I don't think they can all park on the street. I suggested, yes, parking is tough around here, there are a couple of municipal buildings nearby, it might be worth calling the town to see if you can use their parking lots since it's the weekend and maybe show people or have them walk, that's about all I can suggest, it's one of the downsides of living on a busy street. I then excused myself and went back inside. Since then, every time I see her, she gives me these dirty looks and doesn't say a word. Honestly, I don't care much about her being unfriendly, we prefer to keep to ourselves anyway. But now I'm wondering, AITA for not letting her use my driveway for her party. Edit just to clarify no, she did not invite me to her party. Second edit a lot of people seem surprised by the large driveways. I live in a former farm town that's now a suburb in the US. The houses here are on one to three acre lots, often in the middle of the lot, so long driveways are common. It's nothing special in my area, 